Okay guys, we're back with a dose of Helldivers 2. The CEO has got bloody active after a certain incident over on Twitter slash X. So we're going to dive on into it today, at which point you guys are going to be able to have your say. We've got some things that I kind of want to know your opinion on. So with that being said, if you haven't already, smash that beautiful blue thumbs up and subscribe with post notifications turned on. It'd be greatly appreciated. On top of that, check out our sponsor, Control Freak, the number one in controlling gaming aiming that's right we made it rhyme and if you guys want 12 percent off your purchase today you can use code cloud plays at checkout via the link in the description a nice and easy one one that's worth doing with that being said let's dive on in to the news at hand coming from our ceo of arrowhead so there was a original tweet that was put up by a, a live wonderland stating i've been removed from matches due to using a single stratagem or particular weapon the host doesn't like people will kick for the tiniest reason. On the upside, those matchups have been far and few between, but frequent enough to be notable. Now, before we get into what's happening with regards to that, I have seen this a hell of a lot just recently. The most irritating ones are just right at the end, just as you're about to extract. I ever end up getting kicked, or I just get disconnected from the actual host, which isn't, again, I don't think their problem, but at the same time, this running down to a solo play seems to be happening happening quite a lot or getting kicked out to the point where I just receive absolutely nothing for the last half an hour of my life which is infuriating to say the least considering your boys just wanting to get that level grind on now I've got a bit more time but if this is happening to you guys I want to know the situations you're in via the comment section below so let me know what you're thinking and what is that's going on in the community at large right now although I think it is pretty few and far it's not happening too often but again like they state it's enough to be notable now the CEO of Arrowhead turned around and stated that this is so shitty also very hard to solve we have some ideas but no conclusion you know what let's try this hive mind do you have a design suggestion for how to improve the experience now, loads and loads of people responded to it, and we're going to go through some of them in a moment. And then I want you guys to hit me up in the comment section with some of your ideas on how we can stop this motive. I think it'd be quite interesting. And with such a wide, vast audience on this one, I feel like we could come up with some really good ideas to push through to the CEO themselves. But he goes on to state the following. Somebody had put, haven't had to deal with this luckily since I have plenty to of close friends and brothers who play but beating the last set of three automaton missions on hard difficulty and the game crashes for all three of us just as we get to extraction is pretty crappy now the ceo responded to that one with agree that should not be the case our engineers are looking through crash data every day and we have it as the highest priority to resolve these issues which is actually quite nice to hear the crashes do seem to be a bit of a problem at the moment as it stands a lot of you guys especially on pc for me personally the crashes and stuff on playstation 5 don't happen very often which is why i am a youtuber that tries to stick to console primarily we seem to get the the better hand on that regard but on pc just recently with this game it seems to be getting worse the more patches that they release the more crashes are happening and the more connectivity issues and stability problems that we're facing in the game again get down to the comment section and let me know what you guys are struggling with if you go out on pc or even just on playstation 5 It'd be interesting to know but back to the original topic at hand fractal potato actually states being kicked for having a low kill count too i'm actually doing objective and carrying the team to victory meanwhile everyone else is burning through all of the reinforcements for the first 10 minutes killing patrols for no reason objective based stats on stats screen would be nice now this does irritate me greatly my friends are little buggers and i do love them greatly but my oh my they spend so many reinforcements and time killing patrols it grates my gears backwards so actually for somebody who is an obj lover i do quite like being that guy that just tries to run a mission impossible and i know it's a bit of a nightmare if i'm playing with randoms i definitely don't do it don't panic but when i'm with my close friends i do like to try that mission impossible going ahead and getting the obj done myself and actually having the stats on screen would be really bloody nice just to have that little bit of appreciation for what you put into the community and what you did for that team and the ceo actually just said that's a good idea now i do think that that is and if you agree with that one put that one in the comment section below or even just reward the video with a blue thumbs up 
it'd be greatly appreciated. Real quick, just in the middle of the video, we are doing a giveaway for Helldivers. And if you've already got Helldivers, then you can get yourself some super credits at the same price equivalent just by going down to the comment section right now and put in a black love heart and a yellow love heart or either or pick and choose this time. I know I'm putting the options in your hands and we're going to be giving away a load of stuff here on the channel with regards to super credits and with the game itself to get your friends involved. That being said though, quickly back to the video. But another one right here, which is from Expert Squisite. I oh, definitely just pronounced that wrong, so my apologies, mate. But he puts, it would be helpful under recent teammates to highlight the person who just kicked you so you can block them in return and hopefully never get matched with them again. And the CEO responded with, it's a good idea. I like it. Now, I do like this one, mainly because it enables you to, like, get in with, like, the griefing aspect. Yes, you can report people. Yeah, you can do all of that sort of stuff but one you can't highlight exactly who it is that's done it you have to catch the name just in time and it's a little bit frustrating if you do end up getting matched with them again in the future and it just reoccurs whereas if you're just blocking people who are griefing and causing problems then and highlighting that is just such an easy way to do it and would really eradicate the toxicity in the community very, very quickly. Now, one that I'm not 100% sure on because I think that although this might be a good idea, it'd be really, really hard to keep an eye on and keep track on. But somebody put one option would be vote to kick. Another would be only allow someone to be kicked within an amount of time, a team kill, or if they've died a ton and are slurping up all the redeployment deployments. So the CEO actually said a conditional kick, interesting and innovative. Now, the problem with this actually stirs with quite a lot. Now, the as far as the overall damage that you can cause within a teammate and the team killing and stuff like that is obviously situational. Again, my friends are really handy with cluster bombs and we have quite a good laugh, even though we use way too many redeployments because of these bloody cluster bombs. But we do have some good fun with that. And I do think that actually just enabling it underneath that base this would mean that people can grief in different ways or AFK players can be a pain in the rear end and you not be able to take them out because they haven't done any team killing or even if they slurped up the redeploys you can't really kick somebody just solely for being a bad player some people are new to the game you can't really skepticize on that basis we help and support everybody here in this community that's just the way that works now somebody actually put mr bg leo dran stated should try something like destiny commendation system so you can identify those people and match them with fellow toxic gamers now ceo actually responded with yeah we have a report slash commend system from hd1 that we might port over now again i don't know how this one does work but people can be reported for really really silly things and really annoying things and things that just are not even relevant some people just get really angry and will report you for the sake of it so on that basis having like a reported server where you are essentially just put in with other people who are reported is just going to make the game overall completely toxic in that little bucket of people now don't get me twisted it is their fault on their own hand but this one's a little bit of a pain in the rear end and i'm not too sure i agree with that sometimes just because somebody makes a bad decision for a day or two doesn't mean that they should be condemned to a absolute toxic log read within a game they quite enjoy for the rest of their foreseeable gameplay time it doesn't seem like a really fair motive for me but although it may have worked on hd1 so i don't really know exactly how that one pans out although something which actually does irritate me and i may be being stupid here but i feel like that isn't the case but there is a post right here stating, I personally really like to have the ability to keep a lobby truly private. I've had lobbies set to friends only and still had randoms join. I'll record it the next time it happens if needed. So like a code protected lobby for just friends could work allows for easy solo too now the ceo actually responded with this is strange if you deploy an sos beacon it opens the game up otherwise only those of your friends list should be able to join now what i'm putting across is that you can turn it down to invite only so you essentially have a completely closed off lobby where not like friends can join and you can have it so that just random public can't join because for people like me this sort of stuff is a little bit of a pain in the rear end and i know for those of you guys who are quite friendly in the community and add a load of people just because actually they were quite good at the game they were really nice we're going to add them because you never know when we could need another member in the squadron 
you just end up with random people just joining you all the time. And as much as I absolutely love playing with people, there are some times when I'm recording and want certain things recorded and it just doesn't always go down to plan. Or even if you guys just want to play and do a duo run or a solo run just yourself or just with one friend or just with two friends or specific friends, you can then close it off to invite only or private mode and it's going to segregate it that way. For me, that one is pretty much a huge one and I think that that is borderline a must have. I don't know why this game doesn't have an invite only slot. There's not many games I've seen that are just completely open, whether it's to friends or public, and that's just it. Let me know what your guys' opinions are via the comment section below. This was quite a bloody long one, actually, in the end, but there are some great ideas that we've had over on Twitter. If you guys want to add to those ideas, though, get down to the comment section and get some added in now. It'd be greatly appreciated. I'm going to pass on a load of these things as much as I can and hopefully get the attention to be able to actually push some of these narratives towards them but that's unfortunately we've got time for today if you haven't already smash the beautiful blue thumbs up and subscribe with post notifications turned on it'd be greatly appreciated that being said thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the clouds